Good morning, Flosstube. My name is Laura, and I'd like to welcome you to Stitching by the Shore, my channel all about cross stitch. Uh, sometimes we talk about something else crafty, but today it is all cross stitch. So welcome. If you are new, thank you so much for pressing play and uh, giving my channel a try. I know there's a lot out there to watch, so I really appreciate it. And if you like what you see, I hope you'll press like and subscribe and leave comments. Please leave comments. I always love chatting with you. And I love hearing, you know, your ideas about some of the things I'm stitching or maybe answering the questions or just chatting. I enjoy it. And if you are a returning viewer, you know that, you know, I love talking with you and I'm so grateful that you tune in each and every week or once every few, whatever it is, whenever you come back, thank you so much for coming back and watching some more of my stitching and being part of my stitchy journey. I am so grateful for that. So thank you. Um, it is a rainy, kind of yucky morning here, so the, the light's a little bit different than it was last week. I think it was a little nicer, but we go with the flow and we just do what we can do, right? I don't have any fancy lights, so I just kind of wing it. <laughs> That's pretty much my whole, uh, my whole idea when it comes to the videos. I wing it. I do make a list of things I want to talk about and, and have things in place, but the whole background stuff, nothing nothing planned <laughs> so i have two finishes and i have four pieces that i've worked on and i did not start anything this week i'm looking towards april and thinking about what i'm going to start and i have some ideas i'm going to show you today later on uh, in case there's anything you want to stitch with me i'd love to and i'm actually looking towards may as well so um so we've got a lot of plans which i hardly ever do but i do this week uh, so that's why I skipped the, fit, the starts this week. I wanted to just get my hands on some pieces that needed a little bit of stitching. But let's start with the finishes. I have two. They're two smalls. They should be finished because they were close last week. So I don't think you're going to be surprised. The first one is from Sugar Stitches. It's a shop on Etsy. I don't know if she has any um, physical patterns. It might all be digital. This one's called Cottontail Delivery. This is a set of four. She seems to like to do different sets of different things. So if you like something, she seems to have a whole set of them that you can also look at. What I did, I looked at this um, pattern and the first thing that drew me was the truck, the little rabbit in the truck. And that was what grabbed me to get the pattern. When I, I have this one and I have another one. When I was thinking about how I wanted to stitch them, I realized that I really loved the pictures in the middle and that's what I was going to pull out. So like the other one that I stitched, which I think I showed you last week as I finish, I just took this center area and that's what I stitched. So this is what he looks like. This is done on an 18 count magical clouds from no, that is not magical clouds. That is my spring plaid later on. This is called, actually it doesn't have a name. It's an unnamed ice dyed fabric that was from To Dye For Fabrics. It looks kind of like clouds. I think that's what made me um, think about that. But he is so cute. Think of him as like a little ornament. I clearly didn't, uh, I didn't count this right, but He's clearly closer to one edge than another. Think of him as a cute little ornament done up in his little truck. This was a lot of fun. I used all the calls for DMCs. I don't think I changed anything, not that I can recall, but uh, super quick. If you do these little ones like this and pull things out, it doesn't take long to stitch. I can't believe we're almost at Easter. It is feels like it's early this year. Does it feel like it's early? I remember when my kids were young, and Connor, boys, they were kind of the same thing, but Megan, you know, they'd have all the really cute girls' dresses, but they'd all be sleeveless. Now we live in Connecticut. It is not always warm on Easter. And for years, you couldn't find sweaters a lot of times. And I always thought these stores, they have the beautiful dresses, but the kids, especially when they're little, they're gonna, they're freezing, you know, I need a little sweater with it. They caught on eventually, but for several years, I was kind of like, where's the stuff to go with the dress? <laughs> but anyway, that's a little sidebar. <laughs> this is my little finish. Long story to say that 
that's my finish. <laughs> and it was kind of stitched with the idea of Easter in mind. My second finish is from Country Cottage Needleworks. It's the June Cottage. Yes, I finally finished it. This one, I'm doing the set if you are new. Um, this one is done on a vintage country mocha, 18 count, the actual front side of it. And the only thing I changed was, and I do this very often on these on these cottages. Um, I find like I, I find like I need I like to edit a little bit up at the top and the bottom, which are generally the same pattern. They have more than what you a lot of times you'll see me stitch. So between here there were like little flowery things, and very often I like the less is more kind of thing. So I actually didn't stitch those. I did attempt my own sad, sorry version of what a French knot would be on the ladybugs, but I didn't bother on the strawberries. My mom's not going to notice. She's not going to, she will never notice in a million years. So rather than all of those strawberries, me having to do like four or five French knots in each one, I said, it's just going to be like this. So that's it. That's a wrap on June. I think I have four more months to go and uh, then this set will be finished. So those are my two finishes. I have four projects that I worked on, works in progress this week. And I'm trying to think, a couple of them I pulled out uh, from not last week. So a few different things. The first one, I need my iPad because it's the one I'm changing quite a bit. Let me see if I can get there. Let's see. So this is from this current Punch Needle Primitive Stitcher Magazine. I always have to think uh, extra hard when I say that, and it's the 2021 spring issue. So this is the original. It's Buffalo Plaid Spring, I think it's called. Yes, Buffalo Plaid Spring, Stitching with the Housewives. Their traditional uh, black fabric. That plaid is actually a stitched um, plaid. Mine's not gonna look anything like that. <laughs> Super cute the way it is. I don't do a lot of, I like to intersperse the black fabric sparingly. I'm not one to stitch everything on it. So a lot of times I do change their patterns if I stitch them. And this is what I have so far. This this is done on Magical Clouds from Dove's, Dove Stitch. It's a printed fabric as you can see, because here's the edge that is not uh, printed. And I'm changing everything. Well. 75% of everything. There's a couple of the flosses for smaller stuff that, I, I, that I've kept, but for the most part, I am changing everything. Because I wanted something that was a little bit springier, I was going with either a, a blue or a green, the blue, the blue one out, I kind of went from there with the colors. So I wanted spring to be a nice pretty pink. The, the little chicks did get a change in color because the called for DMC, well, no, it's, they use uh, classic color works, but the, DMC that she generally translates, I think it's Queen Bee that she likes, wasn't gonna work for the chicks. So I did make that different. What I did realize, there's all these little chicks and a little rabbit, their, their eyes are not charted because it's stitched on black. So I do have to come up with another color for their eyes. And then you're gonna just see you know, some flowers and a little wreath and so on and so forth. I am not doing the border, I'm keeping that out as well. So we'll see. The The words look good. And now I just have to hope that I picked all the right colors for some of the changes in floss uh, for everything else. This is by far the first piece that I have overhauled completely changing it. You know me, I change the fabric quite often. And sometimes I have to change a floss or two because of that. But I have never really taken a pattern and flipped it on its side completely. So We'll see when this is farther along, if I succeeded or if I failed in my choices. But so far, it looks cute. So that's that. We had a great discussion last week. So many of you talked about whether or not you change fabrics and flosses. Fabrics by far is the more popular change than the flosses. And I get you about being afraid to switch because you second guess yourself. And believe you me, the entire time I'm stitching this, I'm gonna be wondering whether or not I chose right. So I hear you on that. Because it's March, one of the goals I had set for myself, and you know my goals and plans are generally very broad. I give myself a lot of interpretation. 
but I wanted to stitch this at least twice um, because it is March, St. Patrick's Month, and it is Nora Corbett's Bells of Ireland. So I spent some time, a little time yesterday working on this. I'm gonna first, you know, first I'll show it big and then I'll bring it down smaller. So this is what we have. I'm really enjoying it. It's my first Nora Corbett, my first any of those. I've never done like a mirror or anything like that. And that's what she looks like. So I worked on, I decided I wanted to work on some greens and work on some of the, the flowers. So that's what I did. So this, this got quite a bit of work and then there's no rhyme or reason sometimes to how I, how I choose what color I'm going to do next. So I just came over here and I said, you know, what? I'm going to, I'm going to balance it off with some green on that side. <laughs> Cause I don't know if that green is even over there. So it's not even like, okay, I was going to use it a little bit on the other side, but I am enjoying that. And I think what I'll do now is when I work on this is work on some more of the greens, um, just to bring that to life. And then I, she has no hands yet and, and all sorts of things like that. So I do have to go back up here and I haven't backstitched or anything. And I know beads are last. So there's still a lot of work to, but I just wanted to, I wanted to add another one of the colors in this. I, I really wanted to see, you look at some of the color choices and you're like, wow, I don't know about that. But then I really wanted to see how this stuff would work together. And I'm really happy that I did some greens. <laughs> so whether or not my um, Bells of Ireland will go away or not right now, I don't know. We'll see. It is kind of springy, and so it could go with my theme for April. Hint, hint. And this one was totally springy, and I think I pulled this out. It might have been on the first day of spring. I said, you know what? Tulips mean spring to me, so that means we have to pull out Pretty Little Amsterdam by Satsuma Street. So that's the original. I, as usual, changed the fabric. So I went with again, more of an outdoorsy type. This one, which looks like a sky, I have, I have quite a few choices with that, is actually Nantucket Sky from Fabrics by Stephanie. It's one of my favorites when I want to evoke outdoors in a sky. I do like her, her this fabric. And I am not in the pattern. There are some clouds, which I am clearly not going to stitch because I feel like the fabric is giving me the clouds. So what did I do? I definitely kind of focused here then I jumped over here a little bit and I kind of went back and forth but this was my main focus there's a row of tulips down here which will be fun when we get to um and then there's some on the sides as well but I'm I'm kind of skipping those until I get to the bottom so that I have there's you know maybe three four five um uh, different colors that it skips through so I want to have those just different ones out and then be able to just concentrate on the tulips as usual, Satsuma, bright colors, cheerful. I thought perfect for the first day of spring. I'm so happy spring is here. Really, really happy that spring is here. <laughs> of course, today it's the spring rain that we're getting, not the spring sunshine, but oh well. So that's pretty little Amsterdam. And one more, and this one is every week. It's a staple every week until I get it finished. I'm so close, I'm getting there. Mary Poppins and the Little Stitcher. I am so happy to hear that a lot of you are thinking about stitching this. I really enjoyed it. I really did. Um, I, I, I totally different colors now from the set Suma, different vibe, but I just really like it. And it was just a lot of fun, charted nicely, fun to do. And here's Mary. So she is done on 18 count winter blues from Be Stitch Me. So happy I chose this color. So what did I do? I plugged my way along on this entire border here and then the words. So I have the words and then a little bit more. It's not just a straight aligned border. It's similar to these, this border here. So there's a little bit more work on that one, but it's gonna be very repetitive. So it'll be easy to do when I get to it. So Mary is getting so close. You all are so clever with your ideas about what I should do on a finish on this. I love asking you all questions because things that I would never in a million years think of, uh, your creative brains <laughs> help me out completely. <laughs> so that is Mary. I don't know if she'll get done this week. 
I don't know what kind of week I have, if it's busy or not. I, I, the words will definitely be done. I just don't know how long this bottom border will take. So we'll see. She might be finished this week, if not the following week for sure. So she's close, she's close. By I'd say the first, through the first week of April, I think Mary will be done. And my goal was to have her done before Mania. So I'd have that one completely finished and I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna do it, I know I'm gonna do it. So that are all my pieces right now. What I wanted to talk about was April and a little bit of May. Um, what I did when I thought about plans and things, I looked through my patterns. I said, you know, I have patterns that I really want to stitch and they always seem to kind of get passed over. Uh, of course, the first one I'll show you is fairly new, so that doesn't, that doesn't really apply. But so I wanted to kind of give myself just a theme for April and this is not set in stone, although these are the ones I would like to. There's been a couple that I really wanted to start, so I figure now is as good a time as any. And I actually chose some fabric choices for these. I didn't for Mania yet. I'm still kind of in idea mode on that one. So the first one I talked about before with you was Crusetta Gogo. And it's called, oh, I think it's called Spring Daisies. Isn't that pretty? I just love that. I think it's so, so pretty. So I am doing this one. As always, if any of you want to join me, I would love to have Stitchy Friends stitching what I'm stitching too. And I think I'm keeping the fabric fairly close to what it was in the picture. I thought about greens, shades of greens, but when I pulled the flosses, it wasn't really working. So I do have from Color and Cotton, it was this past January's fabric of the month, Moroccan clay. And so that's what I'm gonna use. It's actually fairly similar to what they showed. I just decided I wanted, the colors really looked good on that and I think it'll look pretty. So I did keep that one fairly traditional. And I am keeping the called fours. I really love how they shade the leaves and um, the center of the daisies. So I'm not messing with that. So that's the first one that I really do want to stitch. And that one was the recent one that I got. Oh, this is also a recent one. <laughs> Look at this. So much for me saying I want to stitch things that are uh, <laughs> far down the road. This one I showed you, I don't know, I might have showed you last week. Lena's Fancy from Vintage, My Vintage Needle Arts. And I think, I haven't gotten the flosses for that, so I have to pull them, but I do think I'm gonna go with this fabric. And this one is called Summer Storm from To Die For Fabrics. Oh no, yes, To Die For Fabrics. Sorry, Kimberly, I wanna make sure I say your fabric company correctly. So I think that's what I'm gonna do with that one if I decide to pick that one. This one was kind of a last minute, you know, I really like it. Let me grab some ideas about that one. But like I said, I have to grab the floss for that so the fabric color may change. This one I have wanted to stitch for ages, for ages. And I've had it since I don't even know how long. Well, not super long. I've only been back since mid to late 2019 for stitching, but you know. Satsuma Street, good morning. <laughs> There's something about this little guy that really caught my eye. So I have been wanting to stitch him for ages and I, I have, I've had the floss for ages too. And I think I'm going to use Friendship Green by Fabrics by Stephanie. Again, it's another green that I really enjoy stitching with. She's got some great base colors that I do really, really like. So I think I put the flosses on there and I think they're going to go nicely. I originally thought of a yellow, but then there's parts of it that really wouldn't show nicely. Um, so I decided to go with the green instead. So that's another choice. Then I'm going to be a little adventurous. I'm not sure how this will, work. it's a little summery rather than spring, but I've really wanted to try something that's a little bit more full coverage. I really like, uh, I've watched Mandy stitch Stitcher Eagles, Mandy Parker, um, and she has a couple other full coverage that she's working on now that she's finished those glorious Eagles. 
Um, Janet Jabber um, has her heaven and earth that she's stitching on. Um, Amy Sprinkelstein, uh, I just watched your video. I think I'm halfway through. I had to stop because I don't know, I got interrupted. I'll come back to it, I promise. Um, Amy's been doing one and of course Carla from Carla Bean Crafty. There's all sorts of great ones. Now everybody's doing heaven and earth. I of course, you know, didn't. This one is from Etsy and it's called Maxi's Patterns. Um, and you know me and Beach. Look at that, isn't that so pretty? So this one is called Ocean Village 1. There's actually a companion piece, Ocean Village 2. And surprise, surprise, if you buy two, you get one free. So of course, I'm not gonna show you the other two, but um, this, this one has uh, basically the shops on this side of the road. The companion piece has it like on the other side with other shops. And then I got a whole totally different one besides that. So I started to get the flosses for the upper corner because there's a gazillion and one flosses in this thing and I'm just obviously just going to stitch it on my fabric um so we'll see this is an adventure for me and of course if I'm hooked then I'm in trouble because I'm going to want to do all different there's such some full coverages are so gorgeous so gorgeous but I haven't Dip my toe in yet. So that's, I've been thinking about that. I've had that for a little while now and I've just been getting myself ready in the mindset. So maybe for April, maybe that one will get a start. We'll see. The other one that I've had for a little while that I wanted to start, um, I originally saw Brie from Brie Stitching Stuff stitch this and then Janet, Janet, I love everything you stitch. Janet Jabber also did it. So, um, and they've both finished it. It's Yonder from Hello from Liz Matthews. I kind of wait until things aren't like really popular anymore. You notice that I'm not really right on the cusp of popularity, but it's kind of my life. I was never on the cusp of popularity. <laughs> so I, um, I actually am keeping this one, again, a little bit more traditional. I pulled out, this is Honey from the Stitch Me. And with the colors of the flosses, I actually really did like keeping it a little bit more of what was called for. So I'm pretty sure this is gonna be what, what works with that. So Yonder on Honey from Besitch Me. So those are my ideas of some April starts. I reserve the right to change my mind if something else jumps out at me or something new comes out or I don't know, I just feel like doing something else because you know I always do that, I reserve the right to change my mind. But I thought I would give myself a little bit of a set of plans. There's a, f you know, a few in here that I've really wanted to start, so I figured if I kind of give myself a goal and pick the fabric, because that's always, that gives me a little push once I have the fabric. So once I do that, then I can get those started. So those are the April plans, and I've said the word so like 16,000 times in the last two minutes. <laughs> For May, Mania, I, I, I did Mania for the first time last year and I did a start a week and I liked that. I'm not doing starts every single day. Quite frankly, trying to kit up 31 pieces would make my head explode. But beyond that, I don't want to just have that little start. Each week I wanna be able to have time to maybe stitch on something that I really enjoyed stitching on. Um, and doing, you know, 30 stitches as a start kind of now I've wasted the fabric <laughs> so so I'm looking at maybe again for again with my theme and my idea I reserve the right to maybe add or change my mind with it I think for mania I'm gonna go with an autumn slash Halloween theme sort of thing so that's what I'm thinking about with mania and I have two definites that I really do want to stitch during mania and then the rest, well, the rest, I have a couple others to show you, but then there's a few other things in my mind, and again, maybe something else pops up. The two that I definitely wanna stitch, and I don't have fabrics for these yet, is Cinnamon Stars from Plum Street. You know I'm stitching Betsy's Autumn, and I just, I love the two of these. I love the look of the two of these. I am going to, I don't have the flosses for this yet. I am going to grab them and see if they'll work with the fabric that I'm stitching Betsy's Autumn on. It'd be really kind of nice. As, to me, I look at them as companion pieces. I, I They're probably not. 
but in my mind they are. So it'd be nice if they're on the same. If it doesn't work, I'll just do something else. But so Cinnamon Stars is a definite for May. And Autumn Avenue from Little Stitch, right? This is Little Stitch Girl. I know there's some of you that want to stitch this as well. So think about it maybe for May if you want to join me and stitch. And again, I don't have a fabric idea on this one yet. I don't know if I'll go with what she's with the you know the colors that she chose uh, for fabric or if I'll go somewhere else on that I don't know because the fall vibes I don't necessarily do kind of the outdoory like Nantucket sky cloud look that I like to do for spring and summer pieces then um I have this one and I didn't even remember I had it <laughs> I happened to be looking on their Etsy store and I saw this, I said, oh my gosh, I have this one. I think they'd had a sale last year and I picked it up. And so I said, this would fit my autumn theme perfectly. This is from Autumn Lane Stitchery and it's called Autumn Harvest. How cute is that? So it's like a little town. I love little towns, love them. Kind of that, that kind of look and vibe um, for stitching. Back in the day when I would do cross, I used to do, um, Jigsaw puzzles. I used to like to do puzzles, you know, and a lot of times I liked the looks of these. They were a lot of fun to do. And so I saw this and I loved it. So that's Autumn Lane Stitchery. If anybody is looking for a lovely fall kind of harvesty look. So that one is definitely on my radar as a possibility. And then the other one that is on my radar as a possibility is, oh, let me click it. You know, I stitched the trio from hemlock and rye stitchery um when did i finish that was it, it was last year i finished it and i really really enjoyed the set and when she put this one out i i, I picked it up right away um had no idea when i was stitching it i'm not i'm not gonna attempt it's basically halloween but i'm not attempting i won't say it right what the name is so that's the name but basically it's at Halloween in Salem. And she does have a chart where you can put Halloween in Salem down here instead, if you choose to. I love the houses. I love the different colors that she chose with the houses. And I loved how Julie charted the other piece. So I picked this one up as kind of a fall Halloween sort of piece as well. Um, as the idea, I would stitch the houses as one like I did with the Christmas piece. I really liked the look of that. And she's got the fence kind of connecting everything in the front. So I don't think I'd have to do any changes in maneuvering like I did last time. So that is so far what I've thought about. The only two definites I know are Autumn Avenue and Cinnamon Stars. The other two are definitely thoughts for me. Now I need to think about fabrics and think about what I really want to stitch. So are you thinking mania yet? What are you going to do? I think the biggest part for me is having to find fabric. So that's why I'm looking ahead a month and well, it's only a month now almost. It's for the end of March. Can you believe it? Um, so that's it. Those are the plans really. Shopping tiny, the tiniest amount of shopping you could ever have. And I didn't go out of my way to do this. This is a fabric of the month. This is from Color and Cotton and this is the February 2021 fabric from Color and Cotton. If you haven't received it, look away. Um, and it's called marzipan. Isn't that pretty? Really, really pretty. So I get small pieces from the club. So that's the piece I got. Gives me a chance to kind of check out the fabrics and the different colors. So I have some ideas even already on this one. As soon as I saw it, I said, that's a nice, that's nice. That's really nice. So, um, that was the February fabric of the month from Color and Cotton. And that's it. That is all the shopping. I don't even know. Oh, I do have a couple things potentially coming. March fabric of the months, I think, are on their way. So, well, March from Stitch Me. I don't think I'll have it by next week, but Misty is already looking ahead and getting ready to mail out her April. She seems to get the fabric of the months out at the beginning of the month rather than the end. So, I should have, unless the post office really messes up, I should have my Stitch Me fabric next week. No idea what it is. I haven't seen any spoilers yet. That's it for shopping. All we got. Giveaways. Thank you so much for everyone who talked about 
uh, last week. I had talked about this earlier, about what you did with the fabrics and flosses. So fun to see what everybody does or likes to do and how we all make it our own, whether we go crazy with changes or don't. I mean, that's what we like and what we're comfortable with. Love it. Love it. So the giveaway this week was for two variegated DMCs and then two thread works, which are variegated, but a little bit lighter in the variegation. These are a little bit more obvious. So these four flosses are the giveaway for this week. And the winner is, I didn't really separate these very well this morning. <laughs> I wrote it and then just plopped them in the bowl. All right, pull apart. And the winner is Sherry Terry. Sherry, you always comment. I love seeing your comments. If you could please give me your address, either by emailing me through Gmail or shooting me a DM on Instagram, I will get these out to you. So those are yours. And this week we have a pattern. This week I'm giving away a pattern. Um, before I, I, I don't always remember to give them. So as always, the rules for giveaways, please be 18. Please don't say giveaway or free. Um, and I would love it if you'd be a subscriber. And with the giveaways, when I pick a name, I, then you have two weeks to get back to me. If I don't hear from you within two weeks and I do a reminder in between those two weeks, then I pick another name because I got to keep this stuff just rolling out of the house. <laughs> I have too much stuff. I don't need any more piling up. This, uh, because we're heading towards April, I, I haven't stitched any of these, but I find them really pretty. And I think at some point I may stitch the set, Cottage Garden Samplings, and it's April's Daisy. So the words April showers, bring May flowers. And so there's a set of these, a uh, set of 12 for each month, and they kind of focus on a flower. And so that is kind of what my focus on what the question this week will be. Everybody, What's your favorite flower? Do you have a favorite flower? And if you do, what is it? If you're like me and plants basically sh shrink in fear when I get anywhere near them, I like to look at flowers from afar, some of which I have no clue what their names are, but I love them. I love, 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 love looking at other people's talents with gardening. Me, not so much. Um, so what's your favorite flower? And if you'd like to put your name in for this, since we are raining today, and this talks about April showers, we're gonna talk, the word to say would be rain. So answer the question about your favorite flower and anywhere in your comment, just say the word rain and I'll put your name in. And these are super cute. If you haven't, well, they're probably older. So I say, yeah, if you haven't seen them, they're 2013. Of course you all probably have seen them besides me. But to me, they were brand new and they're really pretty. I really, really like all of them. So you may see some more as the months go by of some more of these. Just a hint. So that's this week's giveaway. And that's it. If you are heading out because you don't want to hear life stuff, then have a fantastic, fabulous week. And I will see you next week, hopefully. Uh, Life-wise, um, so it was a little bit crazier week than I thought it would be. Uh, as you know, Connect well, why would you know unless you live in Connecticut? That's silly. Well, as you know, we're all, um, different states are opening up vaccination to different age groups at different times. That part we all know. Well, Connecticut was had set Friday as the day for 55 and, no, 45 and older. It had been 55 and I'd missed it for by a few years. So I had to wait for the 45 plus. Um, in Connecticut, unfortunately, when they first open, it is crazy, crazy, crazy. Some people really luck out and get a um, appointment right away. And then there are people waiting weeks. I was a little anxious about that. So when I think it was either Thursday or Friday, we got an email, um, one of down in Delaware, where we have uh, um, the house that we built last year in the development, one of the uh, people who live there, he owns a pharmacy and he was getting in, I don't know, uh, he was getting in um, vaccines. And so he opened it up to anybody over 50 because those were the, those were the rules in Delaware. Um, anybody from the community over 50, 
if you wanted to, and he had, you know, if he had the doses to sign up to get a vaccination. So I could wait and not know whether or not I could get one in Connecticut for a while, or I could sign up right away and just make a trip to Delaware. That's what we did. So I signed up on, I know on, you know, found out on Friday that I could have an appointment on Sunday. So ironically though, Mo had things that he had to do Saturday. So we could not go down on Saturday. So we got up really, really, really early on Sunday morning and we hit the road, got to the house, chilled for a few minutes. I actually met some more neighbors, which was kind of nice. So that was all fortuitous because I had met some of the neighbors uh, next to us and then a house just built behind us. And I met that uh, one of the neighbors there too. So it all worked out. Um, then I went and I was able to get my first shot and um, super excited super excited to be able to do that and not have to sit there and refresh and refresh and refresh on the computer worrying about when I get an appointment. Mo, through his doctor's offices, they're really on the ball, so he's able to get one. He's getting his tomorrow, so he didn't have to go, but he drove with me, obviously, in case there was any issues. Um, and came home, I didn't have anything then, you know, when you first get it. Um, my arm was a little sore and was for about mm, two days, but not crazy, crazy. I mean, I could move it, it just slowly. And I had a headache, although I had a headache beforehand. And then I know you couldn't take stuff. So I think I got a little bit of a headache and I was tired, but I don't sleep well, so I'm always tired. So it's tough to tell what I actually had and what <laughs> I think, you know, I think a little tired and a little headache and then the arm. But so on Monday we chilled, it was a nice day. So we did a nice gentle walk around the neighborhood and um, I did some stitching. That was my Mary Poppins day. And, um, and then on Tuesday we came back. It was a very quick trip uh, just to, to get that done. Four weeks from now, I have my appointment for the second shot. So I will be making another trip down there and um, getting the second shot. So that was a little bit of craziness that I wasn't expecting when I looked at my week ahead. Um, but grateful that I had the chance to do it. And the house survived with Connor by himself for a couple days. The dog had a nice visit with the grandparents because Jam uh, Connor would forget probably to feed Shamrock if we left him at home. And um, yeah, I, I, he loves it when we go away. He's like, that's it? You're only going for two days? Yes, we're only going for two days. And uh, yeah, that that's pretty much the week we came home and I've been, you know, enjoyed yesterday it was a beautiful, beautiful day. I think it hit 70 here. It's so crazy. So yesterday it was sunny and 70. Today it's kind of chilly and rainy and I think it's gonna be really windy this afternoon. Tomorrow is supposed to be beautiful and then Sunday is supposed to be a soaker. So we're literally getting everything possible in the course of four days. So I'm gonna to try to enjoy the nice day tomorrow a little bit because Sunday I will probably be in and hopefully maybe getting some stitching done since it's going to rain and I don't need to go out in the rain. I'm gonna stay home in the rain. <laughs> but that's it, that's about it. That was my big life event this week and um, I just, yeah, that's it, that's all I got. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me this week. And if you've made it this far, thank you for listening to all my rambles. I really appreciate that. And I hope you're well. I hope you're safe. I, there's some bad, bad weather that hit the southeast yesterday. Uh, I hope everybody's okay. Kim, I'm so glad to hear you are okay. And uh, if you're still listening. <laughs> and um yeah, I think about you. I, you know, I didn't realize those. I didn't realize those storms were coming through until I saw a, this morning my weather guy uh, that I look at had talked about storms yesterday. So thinking about all of you, and I hope you're all okay down there. Um, but I hope you are well and getting some stitchy time in, and uh, hopefully we can uh, enjoy some nice spring weather. Uh, especially my UK people. I hope your spring is starting to come too. Uh, I don't know, I, I think you get spring a little bit. Well, I guess it depends on which part of the UK you're in. Um, but I hope you're getting spring as well. All my internationals, all my friends who are international, thank you so much. Uh, I always like to make sure I think about you as well because you are part of my stitchy friends. And that's it, that's all I got. So until next time, happy stitching.